All right, guys, tutorial number 16. Let's go ahead and jump right into coding. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make an if statement. So we want to say, OK, if the number of rows equals 1, and remember to use two equal signs here, if the number of rows is equal to 1, then that basically means tomorrow does exist. So if tomorrow does exist, then we want to go ahead and grab the data from it. So in order to grab it, I'm just going to go ahead and use that fetch row. So row, I'll just name this one, row 2, since, and remember, we only have one basically result. We don't need to loop through anything because this is ensuring that there's only one result whenever we made our query. So row 2 equals, in, in order to get the data, I'm just going to go ahead and use my SQL fetch row. And what this pretty much does is fetch the row from, where is my results? Result 2 right here. So it's going to fetch a row from that. Now, I want to store the date, what do we query, the date and the percent change for tomorrow or the following day. So I'm just going to call it tomorrow, even though it's really the following day and not like tomorrow, like today's January 9th, tomorrow's January 10th. I'm just going to call it tomorrow date, would probably be the best thing, date. Now I want to mention this. Whenever you use this MySQL fetch row, it's going to return to you an array. Now it's going to return to you an array and the data isn't an associative array so the very first piece of data is zero the second piece of data is one there is no third piece of data because we only got the date and percent change so whenever I do this remember my array is stored in row two this is actually an array so in order to access the first piece of data just go ahead and pass in zero and we know this because it's basically the order where you made your queries. So this is the date, and I'm going to store it in a variable called Tom date. And I'm actually just going to go ahead and copy all this crap right here. And row one, row two, piece of data number one, which is actually the second piece of data, is going to be the percent change. So if I just go ahead and copy this, I'll store this in a variable called percent change. And now what I can do is I can actually use that information. So let's go ahead and while we are still inside this if statement, we want to make a separate if statement. So if tomorrow's percent change is greater than zero, that means that the following day the must the stock price must have went up. So let me go ahead and grab this variable. If tomorrow's percent change is greater than zero, then the price of the stock has gone up. So what do we want to do? We want to add one to next day increase. So let me just go ahead and copy this and add a little plus plus, add one to that. So whenever the stock goes up, we want to add one to this counter right here. Another thing that we want to do is we want this sum of increases to pretty much be the total of how much of a change is there because you know if it goes up 1% that's good if it goes up 15% that's even better so later on we want to use the sum of increases not to determine how many times it went up but how powerful was that change I think that would be a good way to prescribe or describe it I said prescribe it sorry I got medicine on my head so basically the sum of increases plus equals tomorrow's percent change just like that so now I gotta get rid of my dumb old thing right there and now what I want to do is add one to the total now the total is basically just that counting variable so basically if tomorrow's percent change is greater than zero then that means that the stock goes up tomorrow so whenever the stock goes up we want to add one to the counter add whatever percent change it was to the sum of the increases and also add another counting variable to the total. Now what we want to do is we want to add an else if and we want to say else if tomorrow's percent change is less than zero and this means okay now if the stock goes down tomorrow or the following day then what do we want to do well we basically want to do everything but in reverse so let me just go ahead and copy these paste them right there and put the next day decrease we'll add another counter right there sum of decreases and we don't do anything on the right hand side because that percent change we already factored in 
it's going to be negative because it's less than zero. So this is going to end up being a negative number and this is going to end up being a positive number. But nonetheless, we add a total for our counting variables. And the last clause we're going to make is a simple else. And what this is going to say is, okay, if the, if the following day it didn't go up and it didn't go down, well, then it must have had no change at all. So let me go ahead and where is my next day no change go ahead and paste it right in there and for this I'm just gonna go ahead and put well I totally lost my train of thought right now next day no change plus plus I just zoned out started thinking about cough drops it's pretty weird and I'm gonna add one to my total right like that so basically in this tutorial what we did is we tested the following day and said okay the following day if it goes up then add whatever I need to to my counters the following day if the price goes down then take care of that and also if it doesn't change the following day then we just want to keep track of that data as well so in the next tutorial what we're going to do is actually let me see if I have time I don't know in the next tutorial I'm going to be doing all my other weird calculations so thank you guys for watching don't forget to uh, subscribe and I'll see you guys later